Hi, this is Alex from Rundeck. I want to show you some cool new features we're working on that will help you manage the output that your jobs generate. Sometimes your output contains data you want to catch and use in one or more steps. Sometimes your jobs generate output that you want to hide or maybe put into a different log level so you don't overwhelm the user with things they may not need to see. Other times you want to catch their attention and highlight some something in the output. A lot of jobs connect to things like databases, network gear, web services, and they need some kind of credential information, but you want to make sure that that can't be leaked out into the output so you can mask that kind of data. And finally, you might want more control over how you present the output to the user. So the ability to render that formatted data is, an, is another new feature. I'll just step through each of these really quickly. The key value data plugin takes a regular expression looking for something that looks like a key equals a value. So you have full control over what this regular expression does, but um, we have a little convention here that shows that um, you can have run deck colon data and the name of a key and a value. You also notice here that it, you can log the data that it catches and that will show up in the output in a formatted view. I'll show you that uh, as an example a little later. This one here takes a pattern that would be in a line of the output and you can, for example, just quiet it, it won't be shown, or turn it to another log level. You might have job options that take a secure input and you want to make sure that you replace whatever the user is given uh, with your own string that will show up in the log file. And this will prevent the, the actual credential information being put in the logs, but your steps can still get at it. And then lastly, you might have a job step that generates a particular type of format. And these plugins here will render it in a nice uh, tabular form or depending on the kind of uh, data it is. Um, it'll even let you render your own HTML or markdown if you want to have a very nice business friendly uh, appearance to your output. Well, let's take a look at some examples. This first example here um, is, is one where you have a command, let's say the env command, that generates all kinds of output. In, in this case, it's going to have a whole bunch of variables um, that are part of my environment. And what I want to do is I want to know a, the shell, the user, and the, and the pwd. So let's take a look at how that's defined in this job. Well, we used the key value data pattern and you can see I've got a regular expression that looks for any of those words, shell, user, or pwd equals, and then it's going to find that value. We're also going to show it um, as, a, as a formatted uh, table um, to kind of confirm that we, we caught the data that we were looking for. But these other steps are going to see that data in this kind of context variable, data.shell, data.user, data.pwd. So let's just run and see how that looks. All right, well, here we see run env command, and there's just all kinds of environment variables that are set. I scroll down, scroll down here. We'll see that because we had log data equals true, that it did indeed capture those variables and present them in this nice little table. But then my, my last three steps echoed out those values and um, ac accessing them as that data dot variable name syntax we just talked about. Let's take a look at another example. This kind of example comes up all the time. I've got a command like the docker inspect command, and it's going to return a whole lot of JSON data. 
And what would that look like? Yeah, so for example, here's the Docker command line. Uh, I've got Docker PS, and I've got a couple of containers running. Maybe I want to know a little bit more about that container. I could run this command. And it's, uh, you know, JSON output. I'm used to looking at this kind of uh, data. But if I'm imagining how this would look to the job runner, especially if they're not somebody familiar with Docker like I am, it might be hard to kind of navigate through all of that. Well, let's take a look at this job here. It has the render formatted data log filter. So a job step or a job that presents output in JSON, it will recognize that and format it. And let's just take a look at how that will be. And you can see it's much easier to look at. It, um, it gives you kind of column headings and all of the kind of nesting of the data is uh, organized as tables. And, you know, this is without having to do any programming, I can basically just take some raw JSON output and give it a much more user-friendly appearance for my job runner. And for our last example, let's take a look at this one. This one has two options of secure type, and password one, password two, I'll just type some text in here and we'll run the job. And you can see that a couple of highlights are, are done. So our log filter replaced the value of that password with that string that we, we told it to use, the word secure. It also highlighted another word here, the word cool. Let's take a look at it. Okay, here's the job definition. We've got a, a log filter that is going to mask those secure options. And what we've done here is we use the word secure in place of whatever the user typed in. And we're just gonna give it a little bit of ANSI color, um, red in this case, so it kind of stands out. Sometimes you might want to highlight something else in the output. So maybe I want to highlight this word cool. And we do that by giving it a pattern. If the word is cool, then we'll make the background yellow and bold it. And let's run through that one more time. So there you can see it found cool and gave it a yellow background and a bold text. And the values for the passwords that were given as options are colored red and use this secure word. So we think there's going to be all kinds of uses for these new plugins. And we really look forward to getting feedback and see your examples.